Senator Joe Griffo's in studio here. Good morning, Joseph. Good, Good morning. morning. Speaking of numbers, uh, my phone crashed about uh, a week ago, so I lost everything. I don't know if I had that conversation with you. It's uh, well, His is 315. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I the, almost gave my number out on the I'll, air I'll, the other day. I'll tell you why, instead though. Of so. the, instead of the, the studio line. It, it's, uh, it's one of these stories like you would relay. So I get here this morning, and everything is gone. I still haven't been able to retrieve, and we're working on trying to retrieve the data. But everything is gone because I use my phone both personally, professionally, and yeah, politically. Yeah. And so I have nothing, and it's cold outside. And there's and now I'm proud of you that you're not smoking as much, but I, I now realize Jeff's not out here. I don't have a number to call anybody, and I'm sitting here. Uh, there's I, a doorbell out there now. You know, I didn't realize there was a doorbell, yeah, but yeah. all of a sudden the number to the switchboard came to me. Smitty answered, and he answered the door and uh, Boom. saved Very me nice. from the cold. <laughs> Uh, did you give him the number? Because I, I, I wanted yeah. to talk about this. There's a lot of stuff happening right now, Joe. Um, by the way, our 2017 toy drive party is next Friday night, a week from tonight, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Yan and Dasis. It's open to the public. Don't think that this is closed to members. It's open to everybody. And admission is you bring toys or a financial, uh, you know, give whatever you can. Um, and it's to raise money for Operation Sunshine and Toys for Tots. Music, Santa food, drinks, prizes presented by Dr. Martin Morrell and the arthritis specialist. We're bringing in, Joe, from Breaking Bad. Did you ever watch that show? I did not. Uh, DEA agent Gomez is going to be there doing a meet and greet. It's going to be pretty cool. You did something similar like this a couple of years ago, right? I can't With remember Gallagher, he, and he, he didn't go Gallagher. home. This guy, is going, <laughs> this guy will go home. <laughs> All right. Um, we on hope. The FEMA funds. Um, what is going on? Well, we don't know. Uh, obviously, I think nationally there's been a lot of uh, problems and challenges that have faced the agency of FEMA. Uh, if you look at uh, all the hurricanes and to now you look at the fires that are uh, besieging uh, Southern California. So these weather, these extreme severe weather events are taking place more regularly and as a result putting an impact upon uh, the federal government, particularly the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and that's why it's established. Yeah. So my concern is... Uh, the decision made here was wrong. And I think the problem is that their their funding levels are being exhausted. So it's incumbent upon them to go obtain the right type of funding, the appropriate level of funding, mm -hmm. knowing that these type of things are occurring more regularly and confronting communities across the country. So it's not just a big event like we're seeing right now in California. And I, I've driven the 405 and everything, so yeah, it's amazing yeah. to think that uh, it's surreal when you see these cars are going through with firewalls on both sides of you. It's awful. It's, uh, yeah. it's terrible. Yeah. So, I can't believe they even let people drive on the roads know, in that it's condition. It, it's yeah. just amazing right now. And and uh, But the issue is, so obviously this agency has this responsibility they have to step up and help people so in this particular case this was a serious event and it's a multi-million dollars worth of damage to property to to individuals who own this property and they have a responsibility in my opinion an obligation to help i thought the uh, state stepped up the county executive and county government stepped up so the feds need to play a role in this yeah. i think my own personal opinion, I don't know this as fact, is their decisions are being based upon their resources right now, right, and right. the resources are drained. So go get the right resources so you don't leave uh, communities um, uh, you know, sitting there struggling, needing assistance, but not receiving them. So the appeal has been made, I understand. The appeal should be made. I'm hoping that uh, FEMA re will revisit well, this so, and yeah. allocate the funding yeah. necessary. I hope the federal representatives in our area, both uh, the members of the House as well as the Senate, really go in and advocate and try to change this decision. Uh, Joe, say hi to my wife, would you? Hi, Ellie. How are you? Good. How are you, Joe? Good to see you. She's Good not well. You. She's not well because she hates it when I bring her on the radio. <laughs> yes, hates I, it. I am not liking this. <laughs> yeah. So I, I just wanted to, uh, Joe had asked about the, uh, uh, my wife's father took us out to dinner last night and we went to, what's the name of the place now? Modus. Modus, which is uh, on Genesee Street. And your review of the place, Al? Oh, it was fantastic. It is really nice inside there. Oh, beautiful in there. Yeah. And the food was awesome and the service. I loved it. The butter was really good. I can have that on my, on my diet. <laughs> the other thing, right in was, downtown Utica, right? Right, uh, right down from Mellow's Subs, if you, uh, if you will. The other thing, Al, did, uh, what was interesting um, is all of the development that seems to be going on over there. Now, the mayor is going to be like, well, of course it is. I've been telling you this stuff for how long? Uh, but the, there's a barber shop down there. Wasn't that the barber shop was really cool? Yeah, the barber. They all have, like, new fronts, storefronts, like yeah. glass and stuff. So they're very inviting. And there's a cute barber shop that's there, like an old-fashioned 
um, barber shop, and then then there's the jewelry store, and then there's a and then the chocolate place that's down there. A whole bunch of development that's kind of happened down in, in that area, and they've redone yeah. these uh, these buildings inside. They look I've really. I've been to that chocolate place. It's very good. By yeah, the it's way. really nice. So, all right, Allison, that's all. I, I, I okay, he, that was easy. He won't trust me. So. <laughs> Uh, I can just say, I was going to do more. I had more, but I can tell by the tone of your voice that uh, I should end right here. Yeah, you could. Yeah, okay. Good. Thank you. Good. Have, a wonderful, <laughs> have a wonderful day. You too. My wife. Bye. This is like uh, uh, Back to the Future almost. Now. Remember those uh, days, remember Joe? Those days? Joe, um, uh, on that development, the things that are happening, it does seem like the barbershop. It's, it's an old-fashioned barbershop clean and beautiful inside there it's awesome what? but they also do like um teeth whitening downstairs and tattoos you never know it by looking at it but it's almost like the <laughs> modern honest to god yeah <laughs> it's like a modern day approach to a uh, to a barbershop you noticed uh, we talk about back to the future what's old is new again Barbershops should be springing up everywhere, though. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I know. You have it in New Hartford Shopping Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have in Rome. I know there are a number of new barbershops. I just find, find it kind of interesting right now that all these, yeah. something that was very common a long time ago has become more prevalent again yeah. right now. Well, they've gone back to that old style of, you know, the even the down to the chairs and the decor to, you know, back in the day, very nostalgic throwback look. Uh, talking to Robert, uh, Rob Hilton on the on the issue of this, uh, this tax deal, um, Obviously, we all want. Uh, he charged me a couple bitcoins for already. the question I asked him. I'm not sure why. <laughs> do you know? Do you have knowledge on the bitcoin? Uh, I do thing? not. I was yeah. listening to all of you, but I, I, I'm I did pretty see sure it, it draws off. You have a bitcoin account; and it draws off the account. I did see that Warren Buffett is very concerned about it. Uh, yeah, and, they were concerned uh, about a crash. Right. Yeah. Uh, so um, I, 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 you know, talking about that development, the things that are happening, there is. It does seem to be a young new idea investment that is happening not just in Utica but in Rome and and throughout the valley taking a different approach to uh, to old ideas that's not a that's which is a good thing it, that's outstanding and really have to compliment uh, young entrepreneurs yeah. who are believing in the community and coming forward and putting a lot of the sweat equity yeah. into this it's not only the financial investment but it takes a lot of effort and uh, and commitment and I really applaud all of these individuals who are have an idea and put together a business plan because the problem is a lot of people you just can't and you know this mm-hmm. when we talk about this even with morning radio and everything you just don't come in and hit a light and, and, and touch a switch and everything right. starts there's a lot of work that goes mm-hmm. into this planning and well and, and understanding of the board and and you have these uh, you have these young entrepreneurs that are investing and they're being teased a bit with a with a big tax break and we all look at that as if the, I would like to pay less taxes. Uh, so, but in New York, we're going to be losing some some exemptions. And the fact that we are a high tax state, do you feel that this is is going to hurt us in New York? Well, let, let me first say when you and talk is there about, anything that you guys right. can do? Well, yeah, I can. Let me answer both questions first. At the state though, level. The, yep. the first thing you talked about, I think, for the op- entrepreneurs, these young people. The other impressive quality I see, Bill, is that people are beginning to believe in the community and believe in themselves. There was a time when people here felt that if they stayed here, they had failed. That if they had moved to Charlotte or somewhere else, those yeah, were the yeah. places of opportunity, and that you've achieved success. I think what I, I I appreciate the fact that people know now they can be here, be successful, and claim to be in. Uh, um, these entrepreneurs can take a claim and a stake in making a difference in their community and saying, it's good to be here. Yeah. I'm proud to be here, uh, as opposed to thinking that you have to go somewhere else in order to have made it. So I think that's number one, and I think that's important. That's a change in attitude, and that's a change in commitment to the community, and, and I appreciate and applaud that. On the tax uh, bill, I have interacted with members of Congress. Uh, I think, as pre- look, tax relief has to be uh, dealt with. Uh, I think it was appropriate that this was a priority of the Congress and the mm-hmm. administration. Uh, but I just don't believe the method and manner in which they're approaching this is going to be beneficial. Sure, it's easy to point a finger at places like New York, California, New Jersey, and Michigan, say you tax too much, so get your act together, then your people won't be hurt. But it's also unreasonable to think that that's going to happen overnight. Right. So right. we need to re- re- reduce taxes, and we have to do this in a, in a method and manner that makes sense and actually provides what it's intended to do. In New York's case, it may not in many instances. Yeah, yeah. So I've 
suggested that they look at this a little differently. They can still focus on the tax relief, uh, but mainly from a, a macro perspective, why don't we bring the SALT, the state and local tax deduction, higher? They're looking at a cap. Instead of 10000 bring it up to maybe 30 something like that. And then uh, put a phase in or phase out, whichever way you want to look at this, and say that's going to be exist but only for five years. Now you can point the finger to Albany and to Sacramento and say, fix your taxes right. or you're going to hurt your people. Right. Uh, but you're not going to be able to pull this off by 2018. I mean, no, what I'm saying impo- is without it's a, without right. a it's bad, it's first of all, from a operational perspective, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah. But then you have a philosophic and political difference, too, that has to be dealt with. And, and you have to re- reflect reality. Uh, there are people who feel that there should be bigger government and more government and that you have to pay for these services. So I think that there's two arguments here. There's admin- operational and uh, problem is that unless you're willing to give up services, uh, the, the federal government can cut your taxes but the state is going to have to raise them in order to make up the difference. Ultimately, it's going to end up being a wash if you don't cut spending. Absolutely. But you also have to look at uh, it, to force people to do what I think everybody should do. Even as individuals, you should have a self-examination. You talk yeah, about it. Yeah. You did it with yourself. You want to lose some weight. You want to do this. Uh, government, businesses, everybody should do the same. You know, Take that uh, examination and say, how can we do things different and better? So and you too with the less smoking, right, Jeff? I'm looking mm-hmm. at Jeff, Andrew with the weight loss. So we need to do that also at governments. Uh, and so yeah. if this forces the government to do something, sometime that Could they're be a too good thing. slow, it's yeah. a good thing. Right. The problem is the time p- period. It's impossible yeah. to do, and to just point fingers is wrong. Uh, Senator Joe Griffo, I know you got to go, and I appreciate your time. Uh, you'll be here uh, two weeks from today. You Christmas, uh, Our, yeah, big definitely, Christmas show. absolutely. We've been doing this for how long now? Joe, you've been a part of this show. <laughs> when you were in Providence. Uh, you did it in Providence when I was in Providence, yeah. So it's been a long time. You're going to be singing, right? <clears throat> we'll see. <laughs> all right, Senator, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Senator Joe Griffo. Just a quick thought. I hope you're right, but we all know it's not going to happen. That What New York spends is not going to go down. Federal government's not going to go down. For what it's worth, Oneida County and the city of Utica aren't going to spend less next uh, there's year. There's a reality uh, that yeah. you got to be able to accept. Well, the there's year. also a cost of living, right? I mean, yeah, certain yeah. things you can't control, the energy costs, uh, gasoline. Uh, yeah. So those things go yeah. up, and then you have to pay those bills just like you do in your own home. But there's a lot of things that we can reexamine. But excellent point. Let's just do this right. That's, yeah. that's the bottom line. Joe, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll uh, see you next Friday. A week from Two next weeks. Friday.